Hello, we're over here by the beehive, where we're going to be doing some things with the bees. First starts, we're going to show how to get them without a campfire. We'll place a dirt block down with a dispenser. Throw some shears in there. Button and press honeycomb. Then you take whatever flower and you breed the bees. And then you take the baby. Nope. You take whoever doesn't make it. And they're yours now. The other way to interact with beehives without getting them grumpy is to get a campfire in underneath them. And then you can use a glass bottle or your shears again. I'm using the shears because we need some more honeycomb so that we can make some more beehives for our build that we're going to make over here going to make a little honey factory that's automatic so that we can use honey blocks for some redstone but also honeycomb as a building material. I hope I didn't accidentally kill my bees. When you have an open campfire like this the bees can actually fit in that gap and they'll light on fire. I forgot to encase it. Would be bad if they died. A few moments later. Your bee's on fire! He's gonna die. Oh, he survived. Don't go back in there. So for breeding bees, you need flowers. And the easiest way to get flowers is to just throw one in a fairly open area on the ground. And just bow meal. And you'll get a number of them popping up and you just harvest them and use those to breed your your bees and we've got a couple bees now that will breed up to try to get up to how many we need now we'll go over the basics of just a simple honeycomb farm this design can work for for bottles of honey, but it's best for for honeycomb and using shears in it. So we'll grab the stuff we need and I'll show you how that's built. Everything that's in this chest is what you'll need to build four stacks of this farm. So I'll show you how to build a single, and then I'll also show how to expand that into the full four. Starting off, we will get the hopper going into the chest here. Grab our two normal rails and place them there with our two powered rails. And we'll get these blocks powered. And that'll be where the minecart will go back and forth. On top of that, we will have flowering azalea leaves. We place a temporary block with a beehive. I like to have the hole facing outward. Two temporary blocks. And remove this one. We'll get a dispenser facing into the beehive. And throw a bunch of shears into that dispenser. On top of the beehive, You'll get an observer staring down into it, and then redstone dust, just like that. Now every time a bee goes into here, the observer will detect that power the dispenser, which will shear the beehive. That's why this farm works best with shears, 
is because it's not when it's full, it's every time a bee goes in here, it'll attempt to shear, and it'll only produce when it's actually full. And I like to double this up like this when And this is what I like my cells to look like. It's two flowering azaleas, the gap, and then a third one. That's three areas that all three bees from here can connect to. I just find it to be a little more efficient. And then on each side, you'll have four glass. And that'll encase the bees into the cells there. You can have this double up with the rail so that it loops around this way, and that way it picks up anything that bounces onto this azalea, but having one works fairly well as well. The unfortunate thing about any beehive farm is it's very difficult to make it lossless. So you can have like a three tier system of carts so that one goes under here and then two under here type thing. And then you just encase everything else in blocks so nothing can break through. But it's very difficult to make this actually lossless. We will go ahead and throw in our other three segments now. For the time being, I'm just going to put a single set of shears in each one. And this has it that Every time bees go into even one, it'll shear all of them. So little things to help it be slightly more efficient for what it is, at least anyway. There we have it. I'm keeping this gap here so that we can get the bees into the farm. This is what our bee farm will look like, specifically the honeycombs. And later down the road, we'll do a more advanced version with comparators that detects when these things are full. And we'll use honey bottles for that one. But we need honeycomb right now for a building block as well as for some candles and to wax a lot of our copper that aged that we don't want aged. But we'll wait for the sun to go down wherever it is, there you are. And then we'll get our bees in here. Oh, my bees died. So now I've got to breed up a new batch from my beehive over here. So painstakingly we got all our bees in here. These are the uses for the honeycomb. So we've got beehives, these honeycomb blocks which are a great decorative block, as well as the candles which comes in different colors and can be oop, ignited. Let's put that out. And the ability to wax and de-wax these blocks in their various states. So whatever we want, we can just throw some wax on there and it'll stay like that. I threw some calcite around here just as a block to hold it all together. 
or else Honeycomb will just get launched wherever it wants. And I will have to do a second loop for our minecart so that it picks up these other blocks. But I'll do that in my next episode when I build our building around our honeycomb farm and put in a second layer as well. Thanks for watching this episode on the honeycomb farm tutorial and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.